In this episode of Primordial, we will be talking about some of the strangest creatures that walk the earth today. Echidnas, or Echidnians, which is a colloquial name given to several ancient animals in the group Synapsida, which once dominated the supercontinent of Pangaea during the Permian. And despite many of them looking like reptiles, this group doesn't just include the echidnas, but also modern-day mammals, including us. Today, these animals are mostly found on various islands across the globe. And in this episode, we will be talking about all of these ancient animals that are, in many ways, our very own dinosaurs. Unlike a lot of other animals discussed in this series, the echidnas were discovered rather late in history, mostly during the colonial period when marsupials were also discovered. And they were sometimes referred to as mammal-like reptiles by explorers and naturalists, which is what led to the common word echidna being used for these animals. The word echidna originates from the ancient Greek monster of the same name, who was half woman, half snake, with the name being used for synapses due to their combination of mammalian and reptilian traits, like laying eggs. There was a point where the platypus and spiny anteater were also considered echidnas, but they in fact belong to a family that is within mammals, though they are the most distant and ancient. Echidnas are a diverse group of animals that split off from one another at different points during the Permian and Triassic periods, rather than being a single group or family which makes them an example of a paraphily, which is an inaccurate taxonomic grouping where certain lineages are cut out. Another example of this are reptiles, which technically includes birds, yet birds are not formally considered reptiles due to being warm-blooded and having other differences. In this case, mammals are formally cut out of the echidna group, despite technically being a member of it. One way that echidnas are identified, besides their skulls having one fenestra, is by the presence of a parietal eye, which is a photoreceptive organ that plays a role in the circadian cycle, arguably, and also appears in most lizards. This third eye appears in almost all echidnas except the advanced cynodonts, which are sometimes considered mammals themselves, in that mammals are also cynodonts. For this reason, echidnas outside of Cynodontia are sometimes called trimatians, which means three eyes in Greek. The most common of the trimatians belongs to a group of echidnas scientists call dicynodonts, which can be found in Eurasia, Africa, and South America. This is the billhog. This gopher-sized animal looks like a cross between a pig and a bird leading to its most common name, and this animal has maintained its success since the Triassic period. This makes the billhog the only echidna that can be found in multiple regions. It is also a fairly common household pet, though they are illegal to own in certain US states, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. There is also the toothless billhog of India, which is currently endangered due to deforestation. And lastly, the giant billhog of New Mexico and Arizona, which is the largest living dicynodont. Though there was once an even larger one that lived in Poland during the Triassic period, which was about the size of an elephant. Meanwhile, on the island of Nova Scotia in Canada is possibly the oldest living member of all echidnas, which for centuries people believed was a lizard. The Dirk, whose modern name comes from Gaelic, but was historically called the Atlantic Ask, a name used for lizard-like reptiles like the Scottish Ask. This word originates from the Middle English word ask, which was used to refer to lizards, but also newts and anything else that looked like a lizard. Though, as words like lizard and newt came into use for the respective animals, the word ask gradually changed to refer to only reptiles that look like lizards, with the exception of lizards, of course, but not amphibians or synapsids that look like lizards. For this reason, the Atlantic ask was renamed as the Atlantic Dirk, which was later anglicized into Dirk. Also living in Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island is a much larger echidna, the Atlantic Sailback, which is a much more advanced synapsid and a close relative of the even bigger Pacific Sailback, sometimes called the Great Sailback. This lizard-like animal currently only lives on the northern channel islands of Santa Cruz and Santa Rosa, where it hunts the insultingly accurately named Pinhead, which is a more primitive echidna. 
in the similarly sailed Vela, which also lives in Santa Catalina and San Clemente, where it is hunted by a relative of the sailbacks called the Catalina Monster, which sports a horn on its head in place of a sail. Indeed, the only reason these animals have survived this long is because they were largely isolated from other groups of animals, and another island that served as a sanctuary for echidnas was Opgima, up the coast of South Africa, which brings us to the next chapter. This group of echidnas originate from South Africa, Dinocephalians, or terrible heads, and they dominated this region during the Permian and also managed to survive during the Mesozoic era, due to rising sea levels separating the southern half of South Africa from the rest of the continent until the Cenozoic, where they were subsequently outcompeted by mammals on the mainland, leaving only the species on the uninhabited Opgima alive. In many ways, this makes the Dinoceratans similar to the marsupials of Australia. And like the marsupials, these echidnas include both carnivores and herbivores, the most common of which are the padivarks, which includes the greater and lesser padivark. A rarer example is the incredibly simple-looking platypus bear, which is also called the uso wabata in Swahili, which means duck face. Each of these bizarre plant eaters survive by avoiding the apex predator of Opgima, the manticore. This giant carnivore is capable of hunting padivarks even as juveniles, and even counting modern-day mammals. They are the largest carnivorous synapsid to ever walk the earth. But there is one animal that even the manticore tries its best to avoid. The sequoi, also known as the moose hippo in North America, whose most common name is derived from the Afrikaans word hippo. This giant animal was named due to it having a similar lifestyle to hippos, and like hippos, it is both a decent swimmer and will also eat meat on occasion. Since it is the best swimmer of the Dinoceratans, it is also the only one that will sometimes cross the seaway into South Africa, where it got its original name from the Hosa people, Negimvibu, which is really hard to pronounce, but it means hippo-like, or looks like a hippo, basically. In this next chapter, we will be talking about the echidnas that are more closely related to mammals than other echidnas, the first of which lives on Sakhalin Island, which is home to many strange animals that all live under the threat of the Zash, a massive predator and survivor of a once large family called Gorgonopsids, which are often called death jaws colloquially. Besides the Russian death jaw, there are two other species which live in sub-Saharan Africa. The first is the African Atrox, or Savage, which was once widespread but currently only lives in sparse areas of South Africa. And further north in Zambia is the Sabertooth Atrox, which is sometimes called the Ferox, which similar to Atrox means ferocious in Latin. Another animal that was once mistaken as a death jaw is also located near the Atrox, which is now called the Mambahond, whose name comes from a combination of the Swahili word Mabwa wa Mamba, which means crocodile dog, and the Afrikaans word for dog, Hond. It is not a Gorgonopsid though, but rather the last member of a family called the Thracocephalians, which were more closely related to the last group of echidnas we will be discussing, the dog-like Cynodonts which are the closest living relatives of the mammalia forms that would eventually evolve into mammals. The most primitive member of this group is the Russian otter dog, which coexists with the Zash and spends much of its time swimming to avoid it. As well, in Southern Africa is the Rohond, or Rat Hound, which lives very similarly to the honey badger in that it can defend itself from larger animals through sheer fearlessness. But the large members of this family are in South America, like the wolf-sized Cosa Lobo, which is a predator only rivaled by jaguars within its niche, and whose name comes from the Spanish term Cosa de Lobo, which means wolf thing. And lastly, further north in Brazil are two more echidnas to end this episode. The first is the smallest member of this family, the ferret-sized wolf shrew, which lives in trees most of the time. And the second is the largest living non-mammalian cynodont, the Yacarti, who the Tupi people of Brazil named the Yacariti, or Cayman Nose. Despite its name and appearance, though, the Yacarti is an herbivore, 
and will only act aggressive when they are threatened. Before we end this episode, it's important to remember that, as incredible as the echidnas are, there are many other synapsids today which are just as amazing, and just like some of the ones mentioned here, many are at risk of extinction or have already been wiped out by us. Which is why we should treat all creatures as if they were dinosaurs or other prehistoric beasts today, and appreciate them before we lose them forever. And as amazing as the echidnas are, it is just as amazing, or even more so, that everything from sloths to whales originally started out as something that looked like this. Thanks for watching. <laughs>